I'm just going to put this out there from the start. I'm not sure I've ever been quite so curious to get behind the wheel of a new car than I have with the Morgan Super 3. Morgan Super 3 is the successor to the much-loved Morgan three-wheeler, a car that stuck two fingers up at convention and was, in every way, bonkers. This isn't a refreshed three-wheeler though, even though it does still have three wheels. There's a new superformed aluminium chassis, a new engine, a new body, pretty much everything. The only thing that remains unchanged is the five-speed manual gearbox from a Mazda MX-5. There are two skinny Avon Speedmaster tyres up front, and one at the rear all on delightful 20-inch wire wheels. The rear wheel is belt-driven, and the car weighs 635 kilograms, or 50 kilograms more than the three-wheeler. So what's it like? Well, before you've even turned the wheel, you're very aware that you're jumping headfirst into an experience. I mean, look at it. It looks like nothing else on the road. It's got three quarters of the wheels that you'd normally expect to find on a car. It's silly, silly, Silly. You just can't help but get excited about going for a drive. There's a sense of anticipation, a little bit of nervousness, but paired with curiosity. You're aware too that you're about to drive something that's very special to Morgan. Because the very first Morgan that was ever made in 1909, the Morgan Runabout, was a three-wheeler. I love that tale, that history. This hasn't just been made for the fun of it, well it has, but there's that real backstory there. Then, you climb into the cabin, you start it up. The engine is a three-cylinder motor from Ford, a 1.5 litre. Gone is the old SNS V-twin 2 litre from the three-wheeler. It's also enclosed, where the old V-twin was the first thing you saw at the front end which in turn is why there are now the board light panels on the side to hold the radiators. There's 120 horsepower and 129 newton meters of torque, enough for 0 to 62 miles an hour in seven seconds, 130 miles an hour flat out, and if you're interested, 40 miles to the gallon. It is, in a word, ridiculous. Have a listen. not in a pull your face off kind of way but in a I can't believe this is allowed kind of way and some people might not like the character of a three-cylinder I think a lot of people will say well oh, oh, it's it's nothing like the old SNS V twin but it's got a character all of its own it's a different character and me personally I really like it it's got a lovely thrum to it that exhaust <laughs> and the performance numbers, they just don't matter really. 0 to 62, 7 seconds, exactly the same time as the old three-wheeler, but do I care? No. I really, really, really don't. I think I was a little bit concerned when I realised it was a Ford three-cylinder and it wasn't turbocharged that it wouldn't be enough that it would be lacking torque, or power to be honest, but even from very low revs, it just builds and picks up. And at the top end, it's still quite happy to rev all the way out to the rev limit. It just, just keeps going and going. You're not penalized for revving it all the way out. And you get that noise, obviously which is a big win. And it's lively. Admittedly, today is very dry. It's unbelievable, unbelievable weather. I can imagine in the wet, this would be quite entertaining all of the time. Rear axle, belt driven, carbon fibre reinforced belt. But even today, in the dry, if you change gear quickly from first to second, just get this little little chirp from the back tyre as you get a bit of 
bit of slip. Yeah, in the wet, this would be hilarious. As for the front, it's got enough grip. You sort of need to be quite patient with it. If you go in too fast into the corner, it just starts to scrub. So really, what you want to do, get it slowed down nice and early, steady on the way into a corner, and then give it a boot full on the way out. That's the way you can get the most out of this. And the steering as well, it's not the most communicative. So yeah, it's really best to just kind of go gently on the way in and a bit quicker on the way out. And the brakes are actually a lot better than I thought they'd be. You've got a really nice firm pedal. The pedals themselves are actually perfectly positioned. They're not the most powerful brakes in the world, but they certainly do the job. <laughs> the ride on the LM, that's a little choppy at times. And because you've only got the one wheel at the back, Obviously in a car, if there's something in the middle of the road, you kind of think, ah, oh, I'm going to avoid that. In this, yeah, you avoid it with the front, then you hit it with the back. And as for this gearbox, it is lovely. Exactly the same as the old one. Fine by me. It's really, it's just really nice. It's a little bit too far. I'd say a little bit too far. It's not that far away, but it'd be nice if it was just a little bit further back, but fine. What matters is how it feels and it feels really lovely. The interior, it's a lovely mix of aluminium, fabric and of course wood. There are digital dials for the first time, the surrounds of which are aluminium. There are funky switches for the hazards, the fog lights and the horn. And to start the car, there's a bomb release switch. Because, well, you're building a car with three wheels, so why not? The seating position is fixed, but the steering wheel is adjustable, as are the floor-mounted pedals. It's just a fun place to be. I love this wooden dash, which the people at Morgan were very, very clear about, that when you see wood in a Morgan, it's real wood, not fake wood. No, no, that would be, that would be the worst crime you could possibly commit at Morgan, wouldn't it? These digital dials work really nicely actually the switches that put a lovely lovely feel about them they're proper proper units you, you really know when you've got something there's no oh did i did i hit that button yes you did it's either on or off the straps down here in the door panels keep your phone or your hat whatever really useful a really nice idea one fun thing i've learned today is that you find yourself putting your arm on the outside that's fine cruising along lovely then when it starts getting twisty Depending on what kind of corner you're going around, you want to bring your arm inside. But then if there's a left hand turn, I need my arm on the outside again. It's just one of those things. I love that you've got to learn how to do something to drive it. How many cars are you get in and it's just, just get in, start driving. There's nothing you need to learn or do or practice or rehearse. Whereas in this, you've got to kind of think, you've got to go through the process as I have today. And I think, okay, I want my arm on the outside, but also sometimes I want to be like that. Character. Love a bit of character. And also, these screens, they look great, but just at the top of them, they start to distort. Wherever there's kind of a bit of a fold or a bit of a, a bit of an angle, it distorts what you see. So I can see that wheel on my right hand side perfectly because it's it's right there, it's not beyond the screen. But the left one. I can see the very top of it, the wheel cover, but it's almost a little bit hard to place sometimes, depending on your position. But again, if you're taller, you probably wouldn't have that issue. And as you can probably tell by my hair, it's quite windy. I mean, yes, you expect some wind. I'm fine with that, but if you're, if you're looking for a car that will protect your hair, this isn't it. Just doing that all day every day. Hello, just in my Morgan. How are you? I think what I hadn't banked on today was just how much interest this car gets. Everyone is stopping, looking, taking pictures. When people walk past, you can hear them say, oh, look, is that a Morgan? 
you pull up anywhere in one of these, give it a few minutes, and there'll be someone with a camera. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. You've got to find it hilarious as well that this is a product of the UK. The place where it is sunny consistently, without cloud, maybe seven days a year. The rest of the time it's, well, potentially going to rain. Or it might be snowing in April or May because the UK. It just makes me chuckle. What to make of the Super 3 then? Well, in some ways, it's quite a difficult car to judge because what else is there that you can compare it to? A Caterham, maybe? Yeah, small, British, lightweight, sports car, no roof. But then again, this has three wheels, so of course you can't compare them. They are fundamentally very different cars. And for that reason, this is an event in a way a Caterham. It's the opposite of the 1,000 horsepower hybrid all-wheel drive supercars or the 2,000 horsepower electric hypercars. Those are technically fascinating and the speed is insane, but this, I've kept asking myself today, would I be having more fun in a car with 600 horsepower, all-wheel drive, hybrid maybe? And honestly, I just don't think I would. I think that's what strikes me. Driving this is an event. And isn't that what driving's all about? <laughs>